a.m. every Sunday evening at 6. Also, every Wednesday, we have our midweek service at 7. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, Amen, uh, YouTube, and then you can go to our YouTube channel, watch all of our videos. Amen. Uh, this Saturday, uh, there is an outreach in Panorama City at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be outreaching for uh, the event they're going to have. They're going to have a healing crusade on oh. Saturday evening. Oh. Um, <laughs> if you're sick in body, amen, I want to encourage you to be there. Amen. Yeah. Even if it's physical or mental, whatever it is, I encourage you to be a part of it. Oh. Amen. So that will be this Saturday at, uh, at 11 o'clock for the outreach, 5 o'clock for the service. Mm -hmm. Amen. we right there at the, at the New Destiny Panorama City Church. Amen. Uh, also, uh, next week is the North Mexico Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming up already, and uh, it's going to be a good time. We'll be there Thursday and Friday. Uh, looking forward to being a part of what God's doing. Uh, also, we have the Men's uh, Regional uh, Bible Conference, which is the, the one for Cal uh, Southern California. Um, we just had our local one, amen, on Monday. This one will be with my pastor, Pastor Lorenzo Rivera. Amen. So I want to encourage you to be here. It's a Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, it's a good opportunity to come hear the Word of God. So you know what? That'll be on July the 30th. And then looking forward into August, it's going to come pretty quick. Uh, we got a two-day revival with uh, Pastor Alfonso Lara from Tijuana. Amen. He's from the Diez de Mayo area of Tijuana on the east side. And uh, so that's going to be on Saturday and Sunday, both at, at 6 o'clock in the evenings and then also Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Also, uh, we have prayers. Amen. We open up in prayer, but we have some prayer requests. Um, we want to continue praying for... Uh, for uh, Alvia and Juan and their, and, and their family, amen. I want to continue praying for for uh, uh, Jason and his family, his wife and kids, amen. They've gotten better, amen. But we also want to continue praying for his, his dad, Edwin, and uh, also his mom. She's got sick also recently, amen. Um, so we want to pray for her. Her name is Teresita, amen. So we want to pray for her. God will just be with her and bring complete healing upon her body, amen. I want to pray for... Uh, for uh, continue praying always for our sister Erica, amen, for complete healing in her body, you know, that lady's a fighter, amen, she's a fighter all the time with everybody, but she's also a fighter spiritually, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to pray for sister Erica, amen, amen. God will just be with her, amen, yeah. uh, keep uh, sister Mona, amen, in your prayers, she's yeah. still doing rehab, amen, and we need to make that time so we can go visit her, yeah. amen, yeah. Um, also for, uh, um, the churches in Colombia and Peru, Colombia, they had their, their rally out there. They, they visit multiple churches. Uh, and in Peru, I was talking to Pastor Robert. Uh, he was in Peru, and um, they're excited, man. They're excited for God. He actually has a, a church, a, a, large, a pretty decent-sized church of people. And then, um, and then like two hours away, he, has, he actually has a youth group of about 40. Um, and uh, they're doing really good. Awesome. Uh, they're they're asking for us to go. Amen. They want me to go out there, so I'm going to plan a trip for next year to go to Peru, and uh, maybe we could do youth rallies and, and discipleships and everything while we're there. Amen. So it's going to be a good time. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know. Amen. We if we plan six months in a, ahead. The price, the tickets are half price. Amen. I was looking at them yesterday. Amen. Right now they're like eight nine hundred dollars. Um, I was looking at them yesterday, they were about 400, 420. Amen. If we plan that far ahead. So, anyways, um, that's what we got going on that. Uh, also, uh, prayer for uh, for uh, for Ernie Rios, amen, for healing. Amen. He had a procedure, amen. So I want to pray that God will be with them. God will, I got to have his hand upon him. God will give, uh, give him healing, healing in body. Amen. So, you know what? These are our prayers. These are our announcements. Amen. Uh, we're going to put them on for you. So, let's, let's, let's worship God. You know what, this evening, amen, you give with an open heart. Uh, we've been doing a study every Wednesday. Tonight we'll continue it on on, uh, on giving, uh, specifically, you know, giving of the heart, releasing, and, and surrenderance. Uh, so I want to encourage you to continue to surrender, give give unto God. Uh, there's You can give through our Zelle app. Um, remember the Zelle app, they got the QR code on the screen. 
and we have it, I believe, in the back. Um, use the QR code or change it in your Zelle to NDGIVE. NDGIVE. For New Destiny Give. NDGIVE at gmail.com. So when you go into your Zelle, send it. When it says the contact, put, put email and put it as NDGIVE at gmail.com. The phone number portion will be um, discontinued here within the next week. So use that ND give and uh, uh, to give unto through, through electronically. Uh, if you guys are watching from home, amen. Um, I was, I've, been, I've been listening to a series on giving. And one of the things he said was, he goes, when you, when you go out to eat, you know, you don't typically get up and, and, and leave. You know, when you, get up, when you go out to eat, you, you stop and you pay for it before you leave. You know, because you eat, so what you want to do is you want to you want to pay for the meal that you ate. Amen. So some of you guys at home watching, Amen. You can still give, Amen. You're gonna eat a meal right now. Give and allow God to bless you, Amen. 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 So you know what? Uh, 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 let's uh, bow our hearts, Amen, as we bless the gift from the giver. God, my Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, to give into your kingdom, God. God, we pray, God, that you bless both the gift and the giver, God. God, we pray, God, that you multiply these finances, God. But, God, that you multiply the finance of those who give, God. God, that they may be able to give more abundantly into your kingdom, God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels are before him, heaven and earth with glory. Almighty God, we serve. Amen. Let me tell you, like it said on the legal realm, there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in church. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> He's got his little chips. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to continue our series on, on, on the condition of the heart. Amen. And uh, I got one more in this, in this, um, down this factor, this one in the next weeks. And then we're going to transition into uh, the financial part of it. But it all does relate financially um, about giving. But it's more so if you if you take what we're, what we're talking about, if you take it to heart, you'll you'll find yourself giving to God, not not you'll, you'll find that giving isn't really the finances. You'll find that giving is of self. Um, you can always tell a person who sold out for God because they never stop. They're always giving. They're, they're constantly doing something. You know, they, they, they're they're moving forward in the things of God. And there's always there's always a movement in their life, um, so you know what it's. Uh, um, I was I was uh, listening to this thing, and, and what he was saying was was. Uh, hold on. Let's see if I can, if I can find it. What he was saying was, was in regards to, to tithing, he was saying, he says there's, there's two testimonies in, in, in tithing. One testimony is of the tither who says, I'm blessed. You tell them, hey, you know what, a nice car, I'm blessed. Um, the way they're living, how, you know, how's it going, I'm blessed. You know, a, a person who's tithing, their testimony is always the same, I'm blessed. You know, the people will ask me, you know, hey, you got this, you got that. Well, I'm blessed. That's my response. And then there's the testimony of the non-tither. The testimony of a non-tither, they're, 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 typically their response is, I can't afford to. It it's always comes with that I can't afford. I can't afford to tithe. I can't afford to give. I can't afford to go. I can't afford. And there's always an I can't afford. But when you, when you learn to give and, 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 and release of self, not... Of course, you know, in this regards, we're talking tithing, so it, regard, it, it transfers into money. But when we learn to give of self, we learn to give of who we are, 
of, of, of what we believe and how we live and what we think. We, we learn to, to, to release and give that to God and just say, okay, God, all that I am is yours. You begin to understand that it's not that you can't afford to, it's that you can't afford not to give. And, and when I say that statement, I'm talking about life in general, not finances. When you surrender to God, you're going to find... When you fully surrender to God and say, God, here I am. See, we always have, uh, uh, okay, so think of this. One thing you never want to do is you never want to come to a point in your Christian walk where you do enough for God. A person who surrenders to God, a person who who gives of self and says, Lord, my, my life is your life now, that person will never say they're doing enough for God. The conversation will always be the same. I could do so much more. I could do so much more. Family members from back east will call me and they'll talk to me and then they'll say, you're so busy. You're just so busy. I talked to my aunt in England the other day and she was saying, well, Mio, you're always so busy. I never, you know, I just, I'll call and if you answer, you answer. If not, I know you'll call me back because you're always so busy. And, and this is true. And, and I'm always busy. But even in that, I always say, but there's so much more to do for God. I'm not doing enough for God. I'm not giving of self enough for God. I have surrendered life. I have, uh, we we're talking on Monday with a couple of the visiting pastors from the, for the men's class. And, and, and I said, well, what are we going to do now? Now, what are we going to do now? Where will we go? If we were to leave church now, we we're going to go back into the world now. Where will we go? What will we do? Our friends don't want us no more because we've already preached to them so much that they don't even want to talk to us. They, they don't, they won't accept us in that, in that crowd no more because we're not the same no more. Our family, they've been waiting to watch us fall. We wouldn't want to go to them, and our family's our biggest critics, so they're going to sit there and they're going to talk mess to us. We ain't going to be able to handle that conviction. So where are we going to go? There's nothing else to do out there but serve God. And it's our separation from, from everything else is what's going to get all those people saved. Those people are going to get saved from our dedication to God. So you got to understand, it's our dedication and what we decided to do and how we're going to live for God that's going to get them. So it's, it's, it's important. The surrenderance is extremely important. But we're talking full surrenderance, not, not lip service. You'll hear, that, you'll hear that, that, that term lip service a lot when in speaking about, about being a servant or servitude. You both say lip service. What's lip service? It's, it's stating you did or stating you will, but never doing it. Lip service, right? Hey, how's it going? I'm going to pray for you. Uh, I've, I've had, um, I've actually had, had quite a few people ask me to pray for them this last month. I mean, a lot, a lot of people have been calling, texting, leaving messages, and, and multiple times. And then I was even talking to one of the guys at work, and he even he asked me. He goes, "Hey, I want to ask you something. I don't want to sound dumb." I'm like, "Whoa, ask me." And he goes, "He goes, is it dumb that I want to ask you if you can pray for me?" Because sometimes there's things that I'm going through and I want, I, want to, I want you to pray for. I want you to keep me in your prayers. I go, no, it's dumb if you don't ask me. Ask me. That's what I'm here for. Let me pray. This is the guy, one of the guys that works for me. So I've been getting a lot of people asking me for prayer. And it's easy to say, I'll pray. I'll, I mean, I'm praying for you. I'll be praying for you. I message people, I'm praying for you. Pray for you guys. Because I am. And, and it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Lip service is saying, hey, I'm going to pray for you. Then you walk away and say, hey, what was her name again? But every time somebody asks me to pray for somebody, I always say, well, what's their name? Like, for instance, we have a Teresita once once needs prayer. Her son asked me if we could pray for his mom. And I said, yeah, for sure. What's her name? A couple weeks ago, he goes, can you pray for my dad? Yes, of course. What's his name? I always want their names because I want I want God to, 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 to specifically heal them. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want him to miss. I want no, no misinterpretation. God, I want that. I see the healed right now in the name of Jesus. So it, you, you don't want lip service. So, so after Jesus rose from the cross, after he rose from the dead, the book of Acts took place. This was, this was the start of the modern church in the beginning of Christianity. That's when, that's when the church began. 
the, the church of, of Jesus Christ started uh, in the book of Acts because remember during the time that that uh, the disciples were following Jesus they were called disciples they weren't called church members right they were disciples they were they were the followers of God that God himself was imparting into that's a disciple somebody that's going to be imparted into that you can impart into you can speak into their life and that's who they were they were disciples and 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 up until this point before the the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ to be called a Christian was more of a derogatory term it was more of a of a, oh you're one of those guys you know because they were the outcast. Now, the book of Acts that comes, about, comes along after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts. The book of Acts is, is the life of the apostles after the death of Jesus Christ. He comes and appears to them, but it's, after, it's, it's the beginning of the church and how it begins to function and how it begins to move. How, 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 servant, how servants in the church begin to develop in the church. How important it is to move the gospel forward. How the, how the ministers and the preachers begin to have their places and, and authority and leadership and, and people begin to take positions underneath the leaders and the pastors and the apostles that are going on. And, and, and it's the, 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 the development of the modern church. So this is what's going on. There was a, a, a revival. It was, it was huge. People were just getting saved. People's lives were being changed. Um, the, the, the disciples, they were discovering that the power of Christ, it, it, it laid within them. It still existed. They began to, to, to see the, the sick get healed. They're beginning to move in the gifts, in the gifts of the Spirit. Because now, remember, when, when, remember when, 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 when the, the disciples of, 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 of John wanted to know, well, how come, how come the disciples of, of, of Jesus don't have to fast? And, and then, and then Jesus says, "Well, why would they, why would they?" He's to sum it up. He's saying, "Why would they have to fast for me if I'm here with them? If he was there with them." So now that Jesus has descended, you know, all that takes place, and they discover that the same power that Paul says that rose Christ from the dead is the same power they have. So now they're discovering that they now have the, the power. Peter's going around; people are getting healed, and and the church of God is moving forward. And a lot of people are getting saved. The church is growing fast. Church was growing so fast that during this time, everybody was everybody was sold out for God and doing all that they can to further the church of Jesus Christ. Everyone was giving to the ministry so that all needs were being provided for. Okay, so everybody's giving. Remember, the church is growing. It's revival. It's things happening. It's things moving forward and things are going forward. And, and everything that Jesus was, was talking about is now coming to pass in their own lives. But the church was growing so fast that people began to sell all that they had and to give it to further the gospel. People were just saying, you know what? What do I need all this stuff for? Let's just sell it. Let's get rid of it and just give it to the ministry so, so we can continue pushing the gospel forward so we can build the church of Jesus Christ. And that's what people were doing. It was, it was, it was what everybody was doing. You see, while people were doing this, it was clear that everyone wanted to be a part of the move of God. But the problem was, in order to be a part of it, everyone knew you were sold out for Jesus. And at that time, and at that time, at this time, nobody wanted to look as if they were holding back. Okay, this I'm building up to something, because we're going to read in the book of Acts right now. So you, I'm trying to paint a picture here. You got you got a group of people. You got a group of leaders starting the church after Jesus has descended into heaven. A bunch of people are now following because now they, they believe in the resurrection of Christ, and people are getting saved just just by droves, just getting saved. Everybody involved that see what's going on is giving everything that they have, but they were giving from their heart. It wasn't the financial portion of it; it was the heart. They didn't sell all that they have and give it to the church because they needed a, a tax write-off. What they were doing is they were saying, you know what? This, I ain't going to need this. I don't really care about this. Let's just get rid of everything so the gospel can move forward. 
so much that everybody wanted to be a part of that and say, I was a part of that ministry. I was a part of it growing. I was a part of it launching. I was a part of the revival that broke through here in Jerusalem. I, I was a part of that. And that's what was going on at the time. So everybody wanted, nobody wanted to look or nobody wanted to be seen as if they were not participating and that they were holding back. Everybody wanted everybody to know that I I am a part of this. Okay, so I want to read the book of Acts chapter 5. We're basically going to read the whole, the whole chapter. But we're going to go just a few scriptures at a time. Chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. So I want you, and I like playing on words. I like, when, I like certain words. I like the way things are. The way it's written is written for a purpose. It's not written so we can add, take away, or, 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 or make it defined to our own, our own message. But it is written in a certain way and in a manner that means something. Okay? So in verse 1, Acts chapter 5, verse 1, it says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Just in this small portion of scripture, there's a lot happening. You find both husband and wife in agreement to do something. But they're in agreement to do something wrong. You also find... Uh, you also find them bringing their offering to Peter. But they're not bringing it to Peter. What they're doing is they're bringing it with the wrong intent in their heart because they were lying. Okay? So, so there's, 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 there's just in these two, two portions of scriptures, you've got a husband and wife coming together in agreement. You've got the agreement being a lie. But now you've got them coming and bringing it to their leader to put it at, at the apostles' feet. And what they're doing, they're doing it for showmanship, okay? And they and, and they they know all this. So, chapter five, verse three. This says, "But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself?" Verse 4, while it remained, was it not yours? In other words, before you sold it, didn't you own it? Wasn't it your own? Then he says, and after it was sold, was it, in, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So right here, Peter's saying, he's saying, Ananias, why have you allowed Satan to fill your heart? To lie to the Holy Spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was not a matter of money in the eyes of God or to Peter. It had nothing to do with it. Peter went straight to the core. He says, Ananias, it's your heart. You're holding back because of your heart. But it wasn't just because his heart was greedy or anything on its own. Peter, Peter hit it right out, right out of the nail. He says, why have, why have you allowed? And then he says, Satan to fill your heart. You see, in order for, for Ananias to hold back, he had, a, he had an agreement with his wife because it, they, they wanted to hold back a portion. They didn't want to give it up, because they, but once they sold their property, they probably figured, wow, this is a lot of money. I don't know if I should give all this money. You know, it's probably a lot. And they're looking more at the dollar amount. But that's why Peter tells them, he says, well, hold on, hold on. Forget the dollar amount, Ananias. It has nothing to do with the dollar amount. It's your heart. You didn't give because of the dollar amount. You gave because of your heart. See, 
we don't know what the cost of that was. What we do know is that it was. We don't know if in today's standards, if you sold the property for a million dollars, or we sold the property for a thousand dollars, or you sold the property for five dollars. It doesn't matter. Because like in any case, when it comes to, to, to releasing or giving, the amount, whether it's time, energy, finances, whatever it is, it's not so much whether or not you have it, it's, it's whether or not you want to release it. Example, we had prayer yesterday. We have time. We have prayer. Yes. We need prayer is an important part. Come as a, come as a church and pray together as a church. A prayer, church that prays together stays together. Yeah. So we have prayer yesterday. Your decision to come or not to come is determined by the condition of the heart. Yeah. Come on. It, it, it's concerned by it's determined by the condition of the heart. See, our mind will deceive us and tell us, "Well, you can't do it because of this, or you shouldn't do it because of that." But it's the condition of the heart that's going to draw us and lead us. Peter, Peter hits Ananias straight in the head and he says, he says, he says, no, -uh. no, has nothing to do with your time, has nothing to do with your, with your husband, with your wife, has nothing to do with your kids, has nothing to do with your job, it has to do with your heart, Ananias, it's your heart that kept you from releasing to God, and again, releasing to God is Releasing of who you are. Yeah. Releasing of self unto God. You see, without God, we're sinners. It's just what it is. You're a sinner. Some are bigger sinners. Some are little sinners. Some are bigger. This is just, it doesn't matter. It just depends on how you look at sin. All sin is equal in the eyes of God. So it doesn't matter whether or not you're a drug addict, a, 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 a murderer, or just just a, a good person who was self righteous and thought they did they did good. Either way, a sinner is a sinner. Jesus Christ died for all sin, right? Yes. So when before we give our lives to God, nobody ever said, "I'm not going to sin." Matter of fact, we didn't even discuss it. We just did it. We just did it. We swore like a sailor. We drank like a fish, and it's just what we did. And we never said, you know what, I'm just going to stop drinking because I just want to stop drinking, because I'm just sick of sin. No. We might have said, I ain't drinking tonight, because, man, I had too much yesterday. But we didn't stop. It was just what we did. Right. We didn't stop cussing because, well, you know, I'm going to stop cussing because it just look, it makes me look dumb. It makes me sound stupid. Oh, we found better cuss words. And then we learn new ways to say them so it can come off stronger when we want to have certain emphasis on certain subjects. So we never stop sinning. Because it was the condition of our heart. That's why, that's why when talking about, about releasing and giving to God, it's the condition of the heart. Because when it comes to certain things in our lives, they don't bother us. We can give of this if it benefits us. But when it comes to other things in our life, well, I'm not sure if I can give of that because I'm not sure how much that's going to benefit me. Yeah, I know it's good for me, but I'm not sure how much it'll benefit me. So do you think, and if you, raise your hand if you, have, if you have any questions, input, but if you think Ananias and Sapphira didn't love God, I think they did. I think they did love God. I think they wanted to be a part of what was going on. But they were too busy holding back on certain things in their life. Because I guarantee you there's certain things about, about the ministry of going on at that time that they weren't, they weren't doing also. For instance, if a person isn't giving in, in this case, that means there's going to be somewhere else in, in their Christian walk that they're not producing either. It just all works together. The Bible says that all things work together for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. So we know that all things work together. So if you're not if you're not releasing in this, you're not going to release in that. It's just it's just not the way it works. Because there's no value in that yet. So if 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 you're not giving of self, you're not going to make it to prayer. If you're not giving of self, you're not going to make it to outreach. If you're not giving of self, 
you're not going to invite somebody to church. There's always going to be a cat. There's, it's just the way it, it's, it, it all works together. Now, the church, we don't want, I'm not here to take all your time. Matter of fact, especially this church. So you guys watching from other churches, you guys deal with your church. But in this church, you guys got it easy. Yep. You guys got it easy. We're not even here that often. We're not. There's a lot of things we're just not, we just don't do. We're just not. Matter of fact, there's so many things that we get tired of just being the only ones. We just go and do it ourselves. Right. So we have it easy. And it's easy to think, oh, man, I've got to be in church every day. But that's the condition of the heart. You see, you've got to stop looking at it as, man, I have to go to. And start thinking of it as, man, I get to go to. Man, I get to go to church today. Man, I get to give of self today. Man, I get to surrender today. Man, I get to make heaven my home. I get to receive Jesus Christ. Man, what a great life I have. I get to do all these things. How merciful is the God that I serve? And we got to think of it as I get to as opposed to I, I have to. Whenever we think of it as I have to, there's a condition in our heart that, that Peter says to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? To lie to the Holy Spirit. Because remember, remember I'm always saying, people will lie to me. People, well, they do, people lie to me all the time. Mm -hmm. People lie to God. Yep. People lie to Jesus all the time. People lie to God all the time. And the one who says that they don't, they're liars too. They're all liars. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody says, I've lied to God. We all lie to God. But the one you can't lie to is yourself. You know. You know. That's why sometimes you come to church and you hear certain sermons or certain things that bugs you. It, it kind of like irritates you. Because we know the truth. We know who we are. We know what we're doing. Right? We know. Okay, so let's read Acts chapter 5. Anybody got any questions that you put on, on, on Ananias so far? Okay, so so far Ananias... He's come and he's brought the money. He's brought the he's brought the portion to to Peter. Peter now tells him, Ananias, why is why are you allowing the devil to lie to you and lie to your heart, and you hold back? It all belongs to you anyway. So why are you lying? Here we are, verse five, Acts five five, and six. It says, and then Ananias, after hearing all these words that Peter told him, because then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down. And breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. So let's be clear. The apostles did not kill Ananias. Peter did not kill Ananias. Nor did they ask anybody or have anybody kill him. There was no assassins, okay? The Bible says that Peter confronts them and tells them, why have you allowed Satan to, to lie to you and, and corrupt your heart? The Bible clearly states that when Peter confronts him and tells him he lied to the Holy Spirit, it was God who brought the judgment. And that's why Ananias fell down and died. God brought the judgment. Okay? Remember, I don't need anybody to be honest with me. If people who lie to me, like I said, I don't care. That's fine. But what you need is honesty within self. When you're honest to yourself about who you are, what you're doing, where your heart truly is, then you can begin to grow. Does it mean that you're going to give up everything tomorrow? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that I've recognized where my heart isn't fully surrendered. And now I'm seeking God to help me surrender it. It's, it's understanding that I know the truth of who I am with self so that I can begin to allow God to move in those areas. Because we're always going to need God to move in certain areas. So it was, it was the Holy Spirit. It was God himself who brought judgment. 
Why did he bring judgment? Because you're talking about someone who brought a gift to the feet of Peter, the feet of the apostle, who was Jesus Christ's right-hand man, his main disciple. He brings it to the feet of Peter. Why did he bring it to the feet of Peter? Because at that time, everybody was doing this. Everybody was giving it. And he was doing it and bringing it to the feet of Peter because he was showing everybody, look at me, I'm good. I'm good. It's like it's like it's like the the person who 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 comes to church in a shirt and tie, but hangs out at the bar on Saturday. Well, I'm gonna go to church and look nice, but I'm gonna look ugly like a sinner yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday, but I'm gonna look clean and like a savior today. There's there's no in between, and that and that's and that's what he was doing. He was coming, making it look as if. And the reason why God had to bring judgment is because what he was doing, think about this, what he was doing, the rest of the church, of the brand new church of Jesus Christ that was being birthed at this time. Remember, there's a revival going on. People were getting saved. New people were coming in. People were beginning to transition and say, I'm going to give my life to God. I want to surrender to God because my life was a mess. They're seeing what he did. And the condition of his heart was going to begin to infect their heart. So whoever you are in your heart, it will affect other people. That's why God had to bring judgment. And he brought it quickly. Any questions? Any input? Anybody want judgment? <laughs> Verse 70. It says, now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her. Think about this. We started this whole portion where it says that him and his wife, in agreement, decided to hold back a portion. So now she walks in and Peter asks her, tell me, whether you sold the land for so much? And she said, yeah, for so much. <sighs> so fire, so fire, so fire. They're going to need Jesus. This is, this is the problem that we face in Christianity today. Peter asked Sapphira if the amount was correct. And she said yes. The problem is she knew it was she knew she was lying. But decided to stay. But had to stay stay there in her life. The problem is, is remember, Peter told her, says, did you? Peter told Ananias, you didn't lie to me, you lied to the Holy Spirit. That's why I tell people all the time, you can lie to me, I don't care. You can lie to me how you want, it makes you feel better. Go away, walk away with a smile, I don't care. It ain't, ain't going to make a difference. But when you're lying, it's self. You're, it's self in God. It's between you and God. That's why God brought judgment to Ananias. You see, when Peter, when Peter asked his wife, asked Sapphira, and gave her opportunity to tell the truth, Ananias, you know, Sapphira, did you sell it for so much? Yes, I did. When Peter asked her that, that was God, that was the Holy Spirit giving her the opportunity to repent. She had the opportunity to repent. She had the opportunity to say, God, I'm sorry. No, it's not what I sold it for. God, I know I told you I'm going to start doing this. God, I told you I'm going to give it all to you. I told you I'm going to surrender to you. God, I told you I'd be there. I told, I told you, God, and that's what Peter was doing. It was her opportunity to say, God, I'm sorry. I repent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, the Bible says that, we, we read this on Sunday, it says, Paul writes, he says, he says, and while we were, while we were yet sick, while we were still sinners, in due time, Christ died for, for us, right? In due time means on time, at the perfect time, at the right time, at the ordained, uh, the 
the, the appointed time of God. That's what in due time means. It means in due time, God dies, Jesus Christ died for us. Meaning when you got saved, you got saved right on time. Yes. You got saved on time. Yes. The Bible says that we're not promised tomorrow, right? The Bible says our life's but a vapor, like a puff of smoke here one moment, not the next. So when the Bible says in due time, Christ died for you, it was right on time. Because we live in the spiritual, we live in, we live spiritually. What does that mean? It means either we give our lives to God and we live, or we remain in sin and we die. Yeah. That's what it is. You live in sin, you die. That's just what it is. Ananias and Sapphira. Sapphira had the opportunity to repent. Sapphira, did you sell it for so much? Yes, I did. And then she died. What is sin? Yeah. yeah. What is a gift of God? Everlasting life. God gave her the opportunity to repent. Again, it has nothing to do with finances. It was the heart. It was the heart of Ananias and the heart of his wife Sapphira that caused judgment to fall on both of them. Giving them opportunity to repent because even when Peter told Ananias, Ananias, when you sold it, when you owned it, wasn't it yours? When you sold it, wasn't it still your own? Didn't you have control over the whole thing? Yep. He could have at that moment says, you're right, Peter, I'm sorry. You're right, I repent, I didn't, I didn't do it. At no time in anywhere in this story was were Ananias and Sapphira required to sell their things. They weren't. They were not required to. They were not required to give everything. It wasn't, it wasn't mandatory. It wasn't written. It didn't say, thus saith the Lord thy God, you must give everything and sell all possessions and go on. It doesn't say that. It's not what it says. It was, it was something they decided to do that they were dealing with in their own heart because they thought they were going to fool God. Remember, God knows. God knows. And it was God that brought judgment. So now we have Sapphira, she's there. She has no clue what's going on. All she knows is that her husband came, think about this. She, it doesn't say she brought in any money. She didn't bring in a gift. It says that her husband brought in the gift and he put it at the feet of Peter. Remember, there was always the position of the man at the time. He put it at the feet of Peter. Peter judged him. God judged him. And Ananias dies. She walks in clueless. She Three hours later, doesn't even know that her husband's dead. She didn't know yet. She walks in. She probably came in be like, oh, my husband already gave, so I can go in now with a big old smile. I gave. We gave. Were you guys, you guys, did you guys hear what we gave? Walks in, doesn't even know that her husband's dead yet, and gets confronted by Peter. Hey, did you sell for this much? Yeah. Liar. Dies. Okay. No, he, t he tells you you're lying, right? Verse 9, Acts 5, verse 9, it says, Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately, you imagine she's standing there he goes hey look the men at the door that just carried out your husband yeah they're here to carry you out too you imagine verse 10 then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out buried her by her husband so great fear came upon the church and upon all who heard these things. So, I find something interesting here, and I'm going to close right now. Okay, right here it says in verse 9 Peter and said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Okay. When God has something for us and God's calling us to do something, when God's using our lives and God's challenging us to do things, 
and, and, and we're in agreement. If my heart says, yeah, I want to do it, but then something comes up, and I just ain't going to do it. We're testing God. That's what Peter says. Because you and your husband agreed to test the Lord. And that's what, that's what we do. Now, in this regard, they're talking about, they're talking about, you know, the financial part of it, but they're talking about the condition of the heart, and they're testing God, right? So we know that it's the condition of the heart. It wasn't, it wasn't the gift. It wasn't the dollar. It was the condition of the heart and their deception that killed both Ananias and Sapphira. It was the judgment of God that fell upon them immediately for lying to the Holy Spirit. It's clear, it's written, black and white, we see it. Now, if we go to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, In verse 10, okay, so remember, Malachi 3, verse 10. Peter tells Sapphira that in their gift, in their giving, that they lied to the Holy Spirit. And before she takes her last breath, he tells her that you and your husband agree together to test the Holy Spirit to test God right he tells you you guys are testing God okay now here in verse 10 the book of Malachi says bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blood pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Okay. Right here where it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Then it says, and try me now in this. That right there, and try me now in this, that literally means test me. God is saying, bring all the tithes into the storehouse which is the church bring all your bring all bring your tithes bring your bring your, bring what you're supposed to be giving you and he says bring it he goes and test me with this he says and try me now in this he says test me it's the only place you'll ever find in the bible where god tells you to test him see god will test us but this is the only place where god says okay well then test me now he goes test me and gives you a solid, even platform to do the testing. But what's interesting is that God says here, he prophesies to Malachi, and he says, he says, bring it in and test me. Right? Talking about giving. Ananias and Sapphira, Peter tells Sapphira, why did you not lie to man, but why were you testing God. You're testing God. The problem is is that they were testing God with a lie. In this, God prophesied and says, bring all your tithe, your tenth into the into the storehouse. He didn't say bring he didn't say bring a ten percent. He didn't say bring a one percent. He didn't say bring five percent. He says bring the tenth. He says, and test me with the tenth. And this is what's it. This is what's this. And we're gonna get it. We're gonna start getting into the financial part of stuff in the next week or two. It says, he says, test me this. He says, and the reason why is because when he says, bring your tithe, bring the tenth, is because now you have a standard. Okay, you have a standard. It's like quality control. You have a standard of quality. You better meet the standard of quality or, or, or supersede it. Because anything less, you're going to get fired. Simple way of, of doing it, right? You got you got a stat, you got a level of quality, right? And I say some some people set the bar high, some people set the bar real low, right? I always say that at work, you know. You know, people get all fast. Oh, you're doing such a great job. I say, well, the last guy didn't set the bar too high, you know. Kind of just stepped over it, you know. And, and and that's what it is. You get the it's a, it's a bar. It's the standard. So he says, he says, test me in this. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse and test me in this. And what's fascinating about that is he gives us 
a, a, a standard. God bless me. God help my finances. God pour out your spirit in my life. Promote me. Give me financial stability. Give me a house. Give me a car. Give me bless you got you said to test you in this, right? But he says to bring the tithe. Then test them. What that tells us is. Do we have the ability to ask God to do what he says in his word, where he says, he says, I will open up, I will, and he says, and test me, he says, he says, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. How can we ask God to open up the windows of heaven in our life? He departed such a blessing in our life that we won't have room enough to receive it. How? How can we do that? If he tells us how to do it, then we don't. See, it comes back to Ananias and Sapphira in the condition of the heart. If we look at giving as either if you look at giving as a number, and I'm going to say number for this reason, because when you say number, it could be number, money, or it could be number, time. When we look at giving as a number, whether it's money or time, we'll never be able to ask God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that we won't have room to receive it. Because as long as we're looking at giving as a number, money or time, We've, we have yet to surrender our heart. Because when you fall in love with somebody, you don't, you don't put a number on it. You don't put time on it. That's why in marriage it says until death do us part. Because you don't put a number on it. It's a condition of the heart. It's who you are. It's who you become. So when it comes to giving to God, whether it's money or time, when we put a number on it, the moment we put a number on it, we have now limited God. That's it. God, my time, it's worth three hours a week. Because that's the services pastor wants to have. God, my money is worth just the 10%. But God says that that's his, that's his anyways. We have, you know that even when you pay your 10%, you've given then you need, not only do you need to give, but you need to find the order in which to give, which means he wants your first fruits, and we'll get into that in the next couple weeks also. First fruits, meaning he doesn't want your leftovers. He wants the first 10% of your pay. That's right. it. Right. So, and then when we give, he says it belongs to him, which means 10% belongs to him. We live off of 90. Okay, so 10% belongs to him. So realistically, we haven't given anything yet. All we did was bring what belonged to him. We didn't give. You know that when you're paying your tithes, you're not giving anything. You're just bringing what actually belonged to you. So, so even when we put a number on the tithe, while well, I give 10%, that's all I give all, all, all year, just 10%. Then what happens, we put that number on there, we're, we're limiting. So anytime we think of time or money and we put numbers on it, we're, we're still waiting to surrender. We're still waiting to surrender. It's the condition of the heart. Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't know how to surrender. They knew how to make it look good, but they didn't know how to surrender. We must surrender. The church of God will move forward. That's the, that's the most fascinating thing about all this. I get to see finances. I know where the church is at. And every month, we still move forward. You know why? Because this is not the church of Dan Marino. This is the church of Jesus Christ. This is God's church. God's will, God's bill. He pays the bills all the time. Don't ever think that the works of God can't move forward if you don't, if you don't give. The works of God are going to move forward. The reason why giving is, is important 
is because if you're now allowing God to release. Think about that. You're allowing God to just release. Not just a, a small portion, but when the windows of heaven open up, he says, such a blessing, you're not going to have room enough for it. You're not going to have room enough. Right now, I'm living in a time where sometimes I feel like I don't have room enough for it. The traveling we're doing and the places we're going and the things that we're, we're involved with, I, I, it's, it, it, I'm beside myself a lot of times. I'm like, I don't, I don't get this. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because that's the, the windows of heaven pouring out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive it. Amen? Any questions, anybody? <clears throat> Amen. Next week, we're going to go into a, a, another story. Amen? Um, <clears throat> and uh, continuing with the condition of the heart, and then we're going to go in, after next week, we're going to go into finan the, the financial part. You're going to want to miss it. Um, so next week, amen, uh, make sure you come, come, tune in. Amen. So... Any questions, any input? All right, we're gonna we're gonna end right there. Amen. So you know, I hope this helped you tonight. And uh, let's bow our hearts as we close in prayer. God, my Father, we thank you, God, this evening, God, for this opportunity, God, for your word. We pray, God, that you, God, just pour out your Spirit, God. You search our hearts, God. Teach us, God, to release our hearts unto you, God. Let us not hold back anything, God. Any number, nothing ever, God. God, that we just give all that we are to you, God. God, let us surrender, God. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.